This business is like the Wild West. Gold, silver, rare coins, lost treasures of history. You never know what's gonna walk through that door. Oh, oh. There's a Civil War sword. I got robbed at gunpoint. Watch this. I'm Evan Kale, and this is Pawn Man. Oh, hey there, gang. I didn't see you come in. Evan Kale, the Pawn Man here, and let me tell you something. Is your life full of trauma, terror, a dumpster fire of problems, never-ending stress that you just can't seem to work out no matter how much therapy you go to or... Well, you know what? Me too. This is Bong Water Beverage. It's not gonna cure all your problems, but it sure as isn't gonna make them any worse. If anything, it'll leave you feeling just a little bit better with all of life's woes and troubles and... Bong Water is a THC infused drink designed to hit you fast. This great product's available in Minnesota, Oklahoma, Missouri, Kansas, parts of Texas, parts of Wisconsin. You must be 21 years of age or older to consume in my great state of Minnesota. Visit bongwaterbeverageCompany.com and find out if they're coming to your state yet if they're not there soon. There's a link in the video description. With that, you guys, thank you, Bong Water, for making my life better, treating me so well, and giving me such a great product. And with that, let's get into a great video. Quiet on set, Moja. There will be silence. Oh, or there will be camping. Oh my god! I do a really good one. Say hi to the internet. What? Like, oh my god! Alright, we're, uh, I'm a few fries short today. I'm f***ing tired. We're doing a house call, everyone. So apparently, this is like a gross hoarder's house, and I have no idea what I'm getting into, but luckily, this lady doesn't live far away, so let's um, go and do that. Right, Moja? My check's clear. Yeah. All right, off we go. Off to a great start. I just broke my camera too. I just dropped it in the screen in the back crack. Hopefully it works. Uh, this place is like three blocks away. I said to my mom, yeah, if I get murdered, nice knowing you. I was like over there in the parking lot. She goes, do you want to be cremated? I'm like, yeah, I do. Don't you dare embalm me. It's necrophilia candy. Actually, I want to be turned into a tree. Seriously, not a diamond. I don't want to be a hard crux. All right, let's go. And. Here we are, long journey. Okay, so we're gonna kinda peek through and see if we can't find some stuff here. Uh, I've got no idea what we'll find, but let's have some fun. Let's see, this looks like I've seen these before. A little chest, it's kind of a lantern of some kind. Hershey milk chocolate, this is probably collectible. God, hello 1999. This was all the rage in 99. I, yeah, we have one of these in my cabin. I remember it was like the, like one of the best novelty items ever made. God, I have not seen one of these. Oh man, you are really, really triggering my nostalgia. $40 value. So this is back in the day where you had to pay AOL to be online by the minute. Operation, actually, I like Operation. Vintage games, we'll take these. Got uh, one of vintage Beanie Babies here. These are worthless. I think these are gonna come back one day. Stupid cat played actually about this will sell. Oh, Barbies, okay. That's the Barbies are good. All purpose electrical repair kit. Electrocute you and the family for fun. Oh, cool. Whoa, yeah, these are fun. Okay, I'll take these. Yeah, sure. That's a up game. Jesus Christ. Let's look like an old yearbook. Huh. Hawaii to be a state officially by the under 59. Seniors, go die in Vietnam. Oh, that's weird. Whoever this belonged to, they wrote who is married and who is engaged. Actually, I'll take this. I think that'll do it. So this is what we're coming out with. I, I think, uh, yeah, two, 250 is probably about what I want to be on this stuff. Okay. Right, I got cash. I'll pull my car up. All right, so I just got back now. One, I know what you're saying, because in the monologue last week, I was bitching about, like, I got to scale back what I'm buying. For 250 bucks, I can I can afford to spend 250 and sit on it for a couple months. I have, uh, I think I mentioned this, I have a young antique expert uh, working for me. He's going to be working for me, I think, full-time this summer, or damn close to it. He goes to a different state, so he'll be back here. All that shit I bought, that's all his problem. I'm not, I'm not going to list any of that stuff. I'm too busy. There's way, way more than $250 there. I guarantee you there's at least one item there that's like 100 bucks at least. When he goes through it this summer, we'll have an update in the video. I just, I don't have time, but there was some, definitely some good stuff there. But check this out. This is a Korean War veteran scrapbook. There's no photos in it, though. But I looked, it's also a music box too. Uh, it's empty, but that's pretty. I think this is like pretty much the same thing as as uh, the World War II scrapbook. It's just this is updated for the Korean War. Same one, 70 bucks. Paid 250, I'll, I'll take 50. There's, here's 25% of my money. 
it back right here. But like, just I'll tell you guys off the off the top of my head some stuff I saw. There were some Barbies that were brand new in the box. Uh, there's a couple of vintage lights that I bought. There's some collectible alcohol related vintage mugs. Oh, there's also there's a 48 star flag. That's that's a hundred bucks all day at least. Ballparking, um, two fifty and I mean there might be a thousand bucks worth of I bought. I might fourfold my money. So not bad. Good content. Super gross. So I gotta wash my hands. I got the leftovers of that big one. Right oh there. yeah, yeah, yeah. The the slabs. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Part two. I remember the big <laughs> slab thing I did. Uh, same guy. All right. Uh, let's see what we got here. What, uh, you kept a few of them from last time, didn't you? I did, and I brought them back, oh, yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, we got a five coin set. These are fun. All right, let me kind of assess what we got here and see what we can do. Do you have a price in mind? I don't remember what I paid for it, to be honest with you. 500? You just kind of assess it, like all the stuff laying there, like mm -hmm. all this and then. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, I appreciate right. it, guys. Cheers. Uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a pretty good deal. I mean, I paid them fair, but... Also, I was about to say, the good people at Bongwater just came by and gave me my the premium product. So, not gonna have any right now because it'll massively f me up and I have a lot of work to do. But check it out. What a great deal! He's a creepy old man in a windowless van. Babysit the Here he comes! Look at that! And what's in the pedophile's van today? Whoa! A copy of my book! It's still there! Whoa! I guess I gotta pay you a million dollars because you're a fan! Oh Jesus Christ, more f***ing dolls. This is like my YouTube channel is slowly becoming a true crime show. This is evidence of something terrible. Alright, alright, alright! Wait, where did he hook it? You did a good job. Uh, I know a gal. I know a gal who's got some scissors. You do a nice job, on you, dude. She, uh, yeah, she scissors me good. <laughs> okay, you use those, sir. It's got a music box for one. Yeah, I can hear it. Jesus Christ, these are creepy. Do the best you can, dude. Some, some of those are brand new. Not that one. Oh. If dolls could talk, right? <laughs> what have you seen? Who did you once belong to? <laughs> Smell a little bit like uh, cigarette there. You do the best you can, dude. I trust you. I want you to make money in this stuff. Yeah, that's it. It's just move it back. Right, what the f am I doing? You're like, Ugh. you look like you went down with the Titanic. A guy named Titanic. She went down on him. Probably be at like 25 bucks for all the dolls. A little better. I'll do 30, but that's kind of where I'm drawing a line. I'm hoping for 40 bucks. I want to do 40. That's fine. He's the creepy old man in the window of Spain. There you go. Who wants to babysit the car on his game? Mm-hmm. I am kind. Say some. Others call me an asshole. As far as these dolls go, gang, this one's sold for 40. Like the same one, it's in a similar shape. Uh, I'll probably double, triple my money here. I gotta look through this. Gotta help these dolls aren't, aren't haunted, they look haunted. You said that's a Tiffany company lamp? Yeah. I'm gonna refer you to an antique shop because I couldn't pay you fairly on this and I know somebody who does buy these. This is, I could tell this is expensive. I just, I simply couldn't pay you fairly with oh, the no, amount of money I, I have right now. I thinking about that. I just wanted to see if you thought it was worth anything. Oh yeah, this is absolutely worth something. Let's see here, Google. All right, so I did find it. That's, I mean, that's what I thought. This looked expensive. I can't afford it. How much is it? <laughs> Somebody's got it for four grand almost. See, that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, however, if you want it, I could attempt to sell it for you or I could refer you to an antique shop that might make you a more fair offer. I like, I simply can't. I don't want to rip you off. Because I was going to say even a thousand would be. <sighs> a thousand bucks? I'm a thousand. I might, I'm not in a good spot for that, but I might be able to make a thousand more because I could flip this for. We double. Yeah, I'll do a thousand. Okay. Okay. All right. I bet for finding that in a basement. What basement? My basement, the old store. Oh, I say the name of your store. Avalon on Grand. Avalon on Grand. Check it out if you're in Minnesota. Uh, Gretchen used to be my neighbor. Gretchen is going to be stocking my books there. So this Tiffany lamp. There's one on eBay for 2800 Like, there's, I'm not doing very well on that, but let's talk about Tiffany, because we've actually never covered it, in fact. Well, shucks, gang, let's do a whole episode on it. Yeah! F***ing Howard Dean. 
Once again, you guys, I want to thank the episode sponsor, Bong Water Beverage Company. Visit bongwaterbeveragecompany.com. There's a link in the video description and find out if they're coming to your state if they're not there yet. This is a THC infused drink that hits you in about 10 minutes. It's available gluten-free, sugar-free. It's in Minnesota, my home state, Oklahoma, Missouri, Kansas, parts of Texas, and parts of Wisconsin. Again, check out Bong Water Beverage Company. And with that, you guys, well, since I bought a Tiffany lamp and I've never bought one before, I thought we'd talk about Tiffany lamps. Now, Tiffany lamps are an expensive antique that I knew about before I got into this business. And I knew about it because I used to love watching Antiques Roadshow as a kid with my parents. In fact, I still watch it. Neither here nor there, they follow me on TikTok, which I think is really cool. I follow them too. I would see these lamps on Antiques Roadshow a lot. And I remember being amazed at the price tag that they would command, you know, even back in the 90s when Antiques Roadshow was kind of first getting going. Now, what exactly are they? Well, the only reason I bought one is because I know what they are because of how expensive they are and at $1,000, that was a no-brainer. I don't wanna buy another one because I might be sitting on that for a while, but it is a treasured antique, and let's talk about what they are and why they're so expensive and coveted. Now, these lamps owe their success and their origin, really, to the Art Nouveau movement of the turn of the last century, the early 1900s. These lamps were created by Louis Comfort Tiffany, the son of Charles Tiffany, who founded Tiffany & Company. We've already covered Tiffany & Company. As a subject here on Pawn Man, we've also, I mean, we see it all the time. It's one of the most coveted luxury brands in jewelry and, and flat that were that there is. In fact, as I often say, it's one of the only, if not, I can't think of any other examples of jewelry that won't retain its full value always, but when you go to resale, you're not getting scrap metal value. You're getting a luxury premium. You're getting a brand premium, and there are so few jewelry items that are like that, and anything else made by Tiffany is like that too, and especially including these lamps. Now, Louis was vastly different as a person than his father. While Charles was a businessman, Louis was an artist at heart. He wanted to be an interior designer. He began his career as a painter, but he soon shifted to a love of glass making. And he was really intrigued. You know, you have all kinds of new machines coming out when he's starting to produce these pieces. He was intrigued by the possibilities, the detail, the intricacy, and this idea of turning glass into art. Now the Tiffany company itself, it had an offshoot within its own brand, of course. This was called Tiffany Studios. It began in the late 1800s. It ceased operation in the 1920s, largely due to the Great Depression. His works were collected and exhibited worldwide. He carried his father's torch with quality, with design, with captivating the public, with beautiful things that everybody wanted to have. He had a opalescent glass and copper foil method that was revolutionary. It set the standard for the whole industry of these kind of luxury goods going forward. In fact, it was so revolutionary, it was so well done, it changed American artwork, really. It changed design. So many other famous designers, painters, people making these artists and crafts took their inspiration from Louis and his studio at Tiffany Studios. Now, Louis Comfort Tiffany died in 1933, very shortly after the studio ceased operations. I can't help but wonder, because whenever I read this, we've come across this before. Charles Barber is another example. When the artist piece is phased out or dies, you often find the artist dies very shortly thereafter. And I always can't help but wonder if it's from a broken heart. The Great Depression, like I said, is what killed Tiffany Studios. There were some other issues at play. I mean, that's kind of the macro overarching thing that did it. The Art Deco movement became popular toward the end of the 1920s. Again, largely as a facet of the Great Depression because Art Deco is simplistic. You can make cool things for cheap. It became more appealing to the masses because this idea of these luxury lamps, I mean, nobody had a job. It, it seemed like a, <laughs> pun intended, a rich concept. Also, because you have so much intricacy and detail and craftsmanship going into these lamps, production was very high. Labor costs were very high. Material costs were very high. He didn't cut corners on this stuff. This was the best stuff. It was like building each of these lamps is like the Rolls Royce of lamps. He also was more focused on the love of the art, unlike his father, the business, and he had no succession plan. He wasn't necessarily good at running a business. He was more pursuing an artistic passion. He had all the money in the world. He was Charles Tiffany's son. But as far as the business standpoint of making these lamps went, again, by the end of the 1920s, they're really on a business standpoint from paper, it didn't make sense to keep making them. But even though Tiffany Studios ceased operation, the love and desire and coveture of these lamps 
has only increased with time. So how do they go about making these lamps? What made them so expensive? Well, the first step was to design the lamps pattern, you know, because they didn't make many of these, every different lamp or most of these lamps, they had different designs, limited production. So you're paying an artist to sit down and design a lamp that's not gonna be, there's not gonna be that many of them. You know, a lot of luxury cars like I'm into, like really high end cars, they might only build a hundred of them. Then they discontinue and they do something else. The R&D, and I'm just giving a comparison, the R&D on that from the designs to putting it through to putting it into production, ceasing after such a small number and onto the next, that's really expensive. When designing these lamps, natural themes was predominantly what they were modeled after flower patterns, insects such as dragonflies, landscapes, like you saw the one that I have, it's like Egyptian desert theme with like camels on it. These designs would be translated into a template which would be placed over the glass piece and then carefully colors were selected. They were selected for their texture, and then this is all laid out and put together. Now, part of the collector market in these is there are irregularities between lamps, very much like Morgan Silver Dollars have varieties in the coin and the mint making process. The varieties of these lamps can be a significant factor in the cost. This variety of light and color also allowed for a lot of variety in the light and depth of the product and what you get. Each piece was hand cut to fit the template and then outlined with a copper foil, which like I said, was a revolutionary process. In fact, Tiffany patented this process. And this was a complete breakaway from traditional stained glass windows and how those were made. These foiled edges were meticulously soldered one after another by hand and carefully inspected. And this is how these Tiffany lamps get their interesting mosaic. These lamps encompass the Art Nouveau movement. They represent a harmonious blend of form and function, combining that with their intricate design, their beautiful color, again, this painstaking process of making it, how long it must have taken, and really, this is a counterpoint and a snub to the industrial era's mechanization. You have machines that are mass putting out stuff for the first time. You have mass production stuff happening really for the first time. And then you have these lamps that are being hand done one after another. They're not being just pumped out. They're being carefully created and people noticed. So what influences the value of these coveted lamps? Why are they so expensive? Well, one, like I said, the rarity, the fact there's not many of them out there, the fact that they haven't been made for a hundred years and as a century has gone on, the amount of these has decreased. Uh, I would see this on Antiques Roadshow quite a lot. People who cleaned their lamps, destroyed them. You can't clean these lamps. There are certain periods in the Tiffany Studios reign where certain years are more expensive than others. They're more desirable by collectors. And this is a, maybe it was Louis' favorite design, that drove up the value. Maybe there's so few of these known, that drove up. Maybe something happened in the manufacturing process to make one lamp different than the other. All kinds of different factors can be at play with the value on these items. Obviously, condition is everything. Is it all original? Are there replacement parts? Has it been cleaned? I don't want to keep making the car analogy, but this really is similar to like buying a collector car, buying a Tiffany lamp. Is it, you know, all original? Has it been with? etc. Provenance can also be a factor. Who owned the lamp? Does the lamp have a history? Was this lamp sitting in FDR's office? Was this lamp owned by, you know, so-and-so? Size and complexity is also a factor too. How big is it? How complex is the design? How beautiful is the design? Is it a design that was not well received? Is it considered to be one of the worst designs by this studio or one of the better ones? Now, what are some expensive examples of these lamps? How much do they go for today? How much did they cost back then? Roughly, and this was kind of all over the board, this was a little hard to pin down, $75 back then, 1920 for a cheap one. They could be 750 or higher, adjusted for inflation. That's roughly between $1,000 and $12,000, which, obviously pretty expensive. Now today, they can go for thousands to millions. What are some famous examples that sold? Well, I was able to find a few. The Pond Lily is the most famous and coveted Tiffany design out there. One sold in 2018 at a New York auction for $3.37 million. It features a bronze base and a glass shade, which mimics the design of Pond Lilies. You know, like I said, these are all works of art. In 1997, a pink Lotus sold for over $2 million at auction, which adjusted for inflation, that is more expensive than the Pond Lily. The dragonfly design is another one of the most coveted ones out there. Those go for half a million or more when they come up for auction. There's also wisteria flowers. Those are generally over a million when they come up for auction. The labyrinth lamp, which looks like a labyrinth tree, again, a million. In short, these are big ticket items and there's still a decent amount of them out there. I mean, there's not 
many. What I have is toward the lower end of just how expensive they can be. In my opinion, it is a beautiful work of art. The color, just because it's desert themed, the color is a little ugly, you might say. I haven't seen what it looks like lit up. I, to be totally honest, you guys, I really thought about keeping it because I do think it's cool and I'd love to have it in my apartment and say that I have one. I have always wanted a Tiffany lamp, but it's a lamp and it's like, it's not my thing and I, I gotta stop putting stuff away. I paid a thousand dollars for the one that I have. I found an example. I found one example for 3,800. I found another example on eBay for 2,600. I put mine on eBay for 2,500 or best offer. But I will leave you with one cautionary piece of advice before we close on this fast fascinating subject. As I always say in my conclusions, this does kind of seem to be a parrot theme that I say is, if you see one at a garage sale, be sure to pick it up. You do have to be careful with fakes and forgeries. They are out there in these lamps and there's some really good fakes out there. There's modern reproductions and they make them the same way that these lamps were originally made. However, they're made with modern materials and the way to tell if it's a modern material, look closely. You know, it's very much like when we have uh, Confederate currency in here. Look at the material that it's printed on. It's cardboard, usually. They didn't have cardboard in the Civil War, so that's how you know. Look at the materials, see if it's a modern material. If it looks modern, look at the age, try and tell. You know, it's, you can't really do like a sample test on it, but like use common sense. There's also incorrect manufacturing methods, you know, like with a Rolex. Uh, are there imperfections on the lamp? You know, these were all hand done, inspected, inspected, inspected. Louis Tiffany wasn't letting bad examples get out there on the market. It would have destroyed his product and the aesthetic and the reputation. So do you see soldering mistakes? Do you see other things that look cheap or it just looks like it was poorly put together? It's probably not real. Has it been cleaned? My God, if it's been cleaned, stay away from it. You don't want to buy it. Is it broken? Does it have any replacement parts in it? Is there something that's modern in it? It's like you want to buy a classic car, but it's got a modern stereo. Don't buy that car. That's not a collector car. That's It was a collector car until somebody ruined it. And finally, look for maker's marks, hallmarks. If it's missing these things, you don't see anything that says Tiffany on it. It's probably not a legitimate Tiffany lamp. Make sure the seller is guaranteeing it's authentic and they're guaranteeing your money back if it turns out it's not. If you smell anything fishy, stay away from it because these lamps are expensive. But you know, hey, maybe you're at the Goodwill and you've seen this video and it's six months from now or a year from now or whatever. And you this echoes in your head as you're digging through junk and you find that and maybe somebody doesn't know what it is. If you come across one of these, anything a thousand or under, buy it. And that's Tiffany Company lamps for you guys. All right, guys, well, that'll do it for this episode of Pawn Man. Once again, thank you, Bong Water Beverage Company, for sponsoring this video and so many others. These products in Minnesota, Oklahoma, Missouri, Kansas, parts of Texas, parts of Wisconsin. You must be 21 years of age or older to consume in Minnesota. Visit bongwaterbeveragecompany.com to learn more about their product and find out if they are coming to your state soon if they are not there yet. And if you guys do check out this product, please email them and let them know that I turned you on to it. And if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Post your comments and questions in the section below. If you like what I do here, consider becoming a Patreon or becoming a YouTube super fan. You get access, early access to videos before they come out. You also get access to the uncensored videos as well as exclusive Patreon only videos. Visit PawnManStore.com if you guys want to buy bullion from me. Follow me on social media at PawnMan. Check out my books. And again, subscribe to this channel if you like what you see. We're posting and videos every week here and with that i'll see you guys back here for another great episode of pawn man later guys